Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I will be analyzing this three and a half minute video by the YouTube channel called Debunked that attempts to disprove the widely accepted and adopted theory of evolution. Before this video starts, I just have to let you all know that less than 5% of my viewers are subscribed and I would greatly appreciate it if you could subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Before going any further, I have to state as I do in every video that I am not even remotely qualified to be talking on the subjects of chemistry, biology, anatomy, paleontology, or evolution as a whole. As far as my credentials go, all I have is a recently acquired high school diploma. Now you might be asking yourselves, if this guy admits that there are millions of people more qualified to be talking about this than him, then why is he talking about it? I am making this video and other similar videos as a demonstration that even people without degrees and years of experience in scientific fields can use critical thinking skills and research to refute some of the points brought up by channels like this. All sources that I utilize for research for this video can be found in the description. The title of the video is, Evolution is a Fact Debunked. It is a tremendously bold claim that the theory of evolution a widely accepted and adopted theory that millions of people worldwide depend on being true for their fields of work can be refuted in a video that's just under three and a half minutes in length. And I am completely aware that they do not outwardly portray themselves as creationists or theists, but the arguments used by them in this video has led me to believe that they have creationist sympathies. And please do not send any hate to the original video. Even though I will be attempting to refute their points and claims, there is no need to be antagonistic or unkind. If the true goal is to clear up any misconceptions, then you have to at least show the opposition that you're capable of basic human respect. The original video will be linked in the description, and this is not an attempt to send an army people after them. I just believe that there is value in watching the work independently before watching critiques of it. Alright, now on with the video. Matter to man, protein to purpose, accident to president, and poo-poo to pawpaw. Welcome to the evolution revolution, my stardust siblings. It's all the rage, you know. Profs at prestigious universities, top-notch high school teachers, and all kinds of scientists the world over insist that evolution is a bona fide fact. But is it? Well, we're going to gander at the biggie and take it on mano a mano. How, you ask? With math. But before I jump into my speedy soliloquy, when I say evolution, I'm talking about mindless and undirected forces arranging already existing atoms over lots of time, eventually and ultimately producing all the life we see around us. Now. Well, we're not off to a very good start with the video. This is a very vague and poor definition of evolution. And if we're trying to prove something wrong, you should at least know what that thing is. The theory of evolution does not seek to explain how life originates. The starting point of evolution is not at the existence of atoms, and it is instead at the first life forms. There are often misconceptions that evolution seeks to explore the beginning of life from previously non-living matter. I found that these misconceptions often arise from a misinterpretation of Charles Darwin's book On the Origin of Species as an explanation for the origin of life. The origin of species and the origin of life are entirely different. The origin of species refers to the speciation, or diversity within a given species, of already living organisms, while the origin of life, or abiogenesis, refers to the formation of the first living organism. Abiogenesis and the theory of evolution are not entirely unrelated, but the process of evolution itself never seeks to explain abiogenesis. Claims that the improbability of abiogenesis can be applied as a means of refuting evolution are completely baseless. So if the point that they stick with for the rest of the video is that evolution cannot occur because of the perceived improbability of abiogenesis, then there's little point to watching the rest of the video, since its contents will be entirely irrelevant. Back to math, and a little bit of chemistry. But don't worry, you don't need to know much to knock down this fallaciously feeble, finicky, and faulty Frankensteinian fable foisted fervently from fanciful figures framing fakery for Faustian fame. No, 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 and a uh, he... Okay, seriously, what's the deal with these creationist evolution debunking videos and them cramming in a million unneeded adjectives instead of filling the video with actual proof? Another video that I analyzed a few days ago did the exact same thing. Now, if fact one buried evolutionary thinking deep into the Precambrian soil, this next fact, fact two, tosses so much sediment on it that not even the greatest team of paleontologists with the latest subterranean gizmo could dig up the remains. Check this out. I know being nitpicky about video presentation is not entirely relevant, 
But these videos are so much harder to take seriously when their contents are identical to that of a fifth grader who just discovered a thesaurus for the first time. Here we go. This is a protein, the basic building block of life. A protein is made up of a chain of amino acids that bond together in a specific sequence. When it comes to living things though, not just any amino acid will do and not just any sequence will work. First, of the roughly 300 amino acids we know of, only about 20 are useful for life. Second, these amino acids must be arranged in a very rare sequence to form the right kind of protein useful to build a living cell. So you got the basics. Well, this is all fine and dandy besides the fact that everything mentioned before getting to the single cell is entirely irrelevant to evolution. The complexity of forming the amino acids and proteins required to start life is not relevant. Let's do the math. What are the odds that an undirected, mindless process like evolution could produce just one single protein molecule fit for life? Let's keep... Okay, just another small presentation thing. But could you please stop using the highly outdated and misleading graphics that imply humans evolved from apes? Keep it simple. The size of a protein with a stable structure called a fold ranges between about 75 and 30,000 amino acids. Let's just take a small number like 150. Fair enough? Great. So, if each amino acid in the chain of 150 has roughly 20 possible variations, that would mean a life-permitting protein forming by chance would be 20 to the 150th. Now you reduce that down, pass it around, you get 10 to the 195th on the wall. That's a 1 with 195 zeros after it, just in case you didn't know. But there are other rare sequences that can work, and we would have to factor that into the equation, but I'll be honest, I just don't want to do that. Thankfully, Doug Axe, a molecular biologist, has, and he found that the odds of a relatively short protein to properly function are less than 1 in 10 to the 77th, which is true for a large number of proteins. So that's a 1 with 77 zeros. Now you throw the peptide and the left-handed amino acid problems in there, you get something close to 10 to the 164th. Now, keep in mind that scientists define the occurrence of anything with less than 1 in 10 to the 50th as absurd. But we're way beyond absurd here. Allow me to paint a visual. It would be like traveling the universe in an accidentally manufactured spacecraft, stopping on a whim, then reaching out blindfolded into a sea of 10 to the 80th different colored atoms and retrieving the only red one. All this, mind you, just to get one protein. And you need roughly 300 to form the simplest living cell we know of. But the point is this. You can't get a protein, you can't get a cell, and you can't get a life. That's just, well, life. So deal with it. But at least be honest with me, you wouldn't bet on the next hand after your opponent dealt himself a royal flush, would you? And that's far more likely to happen than our protein problem. So please, don't bet something more precious on an absurdity. And that's all I got for now, but rest assured, this chucklesome notion that blind, undirected processes can produce even a single protein, let alone life, has been, dare I say mathematically anyway, debunked. Adios. Well, the rest of the video confirmed the suspicions that I had at the start, and this really was just a giant waste of my time. Usually when attempting to debunk something, it's a good idea to actually know what you're trying to debunk. As was expected, the last portion of this video was crammed with extravagant analogies in Math for Abiogenesis, and there was no actual discussion of evolution in this video. I'm going to need to take a nap after this one, but thank you all for watching.